everyone, this is Chiki from Chiki Creates and welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> so about a year or so ago, I posted this tutorial about how I personally design enamel pins using Photoshop and Illustrator and it got quite a lot of questions and I tried my best to answer most of the questions there but there are some questions that I wasn't able to answer anymore because honestly it was a really old video it's like more than a year old as I said a while ago I thought that I'd make a video this month that's basically answering all the unanswered questions and maybe some of the answered questions also just to reiterate some tips or some facts or whatever <laughs> and yeah so this is more of a casual video. I have no script at all, so if it's a bit messy, I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, so I have my phone over here and I have it opened to the enamel pin design tutorial. If you wanna watch it, if you haven't watched it before, there's gonna be a link in the description and also somewhere around here. <laughs> and yeah, let's get to it. So one of the questions that I have on that video was whether it was necessary to use Illustrator to color the pin and no, that's not necessary at all. I just use Illustrator because I already have um, the color book, the Pantone color book in Illustrator. Like there is a library, a color library in Illustrator that already has like all the Pantone solid coated swatches so you just like kind of pick and choose there and it's free and it's really easy I'm really sorry about the little sounds you hear in the background apparently someone's fixing something in their house <laughs> but yeah so you don't need to have Illustrator uh, you can go to the Pantone website and then Pantone will do the color matching for you. They'll try to find the closest match to the colors that you have. Obviously, it's not 100% perfect, but if you don't have Illustrator or if you don't have um, the Pantone formula guide, then that's a good place to start. And I mean the Pantone formula guide, you know, the book. I still don't have that by the way, but I did buy one from the UK website, so I'm just kind of waiting for it now. And yeah, maybe I'll show you my Pantone look once it arrives. <laughs> so another question is uh, someone who wanted to get into enamel pin making and asking how detailed you can get with enamel pins and quite frankly, pretty detailed. It also depends if you, s you do screen print for some of the details because if you do screen print, it's gonna be like super super detailed um like hang on let me get one of my pins with screen print hang on so here i am <laughs> so this is my Aerith pin okay so there you go so that's this is my Aerith pin and it's uh, honestly it's three inches in size but if you can see her face compared to like my pointer finger that's really small and the details on her face are like really good she has she even has like the little shine in her eyes she has two colors for her lips she has like the green eyes of course and the little nose thing so yeah if you do screen print it is going to be pretty detailed although if you want the details to be metal yeah you can still do it pretty detailed but there is a minimum line weight for metal I kind of forgot <laughs> the minimum line weight. I think it was like point, point 0.5 or point 0.3. But basically, I don't even measure my line weight. <laughs> so the your manufacturer always is the most experienced when it comes to this. And so they will tell you, or well, my, my menu at least, tells me when they couldn't do something because it's too detailed and then they would like, you know, propose some edits. Sometimes they would edit it on their own, like they would edit my artwork on their own. But usually I just ask them like 
what could be changed and then I do the artwork editing on my own because you know I could be quite anal when it comes to my artwork I want it my way <laughs> so this one's asking that because um, they've noticed some pins that have a goldish lining around the black outline hmm I'm not really sure if this is what you're referring to specifically but the blackish uh, the blackish line with the gold outline that's actually like um, all gold metal and yeah I've seen this in a lot of pictures where the gold metal has like it's kind of black in some parts and that's actually just a reflection of the camera <laughs> there's another question um, asking me does it matter what size the design is when you send it in to get looked at by the company you chose yes it does matter your final file should have the pin exactly the size you want it so basically you have to resize your pin in illustrator like the pin design in illustrator for example if it's 40 millimeters height then you have to resize the pin to 40 millimeters height in illustrator and um, if you don't do your own vectoring like if you just send a jpeg directly to your manufacturer it still does have to be quite big because then your manufacturer would have to vector it themselves and they do need a detailed illustration so they could vector it properly. So the next question is, do I draw my designs on an iPad or using a laptop? And I used to draw my designs on my laptop but ever since I got an iPad Pro and Procreate I've just been drawing all my designs and literally everything on my Procreate on my iPad and I really really love my iPad Pro like it's one of the best investments that I've ever made <laughs> but I still do transfer the design that I make on Procreate to my Mac and because my Mac is the one that has Illustrator, so I use my Illustrator on my Mac to do all of like any extra vectoring that I might do and also to do the live trace thing. Anyway, if you've seen my, um, my old video, link in the description and also somewhere here. Um, my process in Illustrator has changed slightly, but not that much. So it's still me basically live tracing as much as I can live trace and then just vectoring all the really small details that live trace really couldn't get um, get right for example especially like circles and stuff like that so when it's shapes like circles triangles stars I tend to redo those in Illustrator using the shape tool or like the pen tool and etc do I mind sharing my factory info? Um, so sharing factory info is actually like quite a touchy subject when it comes to pins in general. As for myself, like, um, I don't know, it depends on my mood. <laughs> I don't know, like sometimes uh, if someone especially is like kind of struggling, like I tend to, I do tend to share my manufacturer, but I'm very hesitant to do it like to share it publicly or like you know like literally everywhere just because like uh, people's experience with manufacturers just like vary a lot my manufacturer my main manufacturer because I have a couple that I go to depending on the design that I want to make my main manufacturer is really like great for me but some people really don't like the manufacturer that I really like and yeah, it just really depends. And I would say that it especially depends on the type of pin you're making. Like if you're doing like these kinds of like three inches big pin, I went to a different menu for this one just because like my regular menu is super expensive <laughs> and I wanted to try a new menu. And I wanted to try someone who's more um, experienced with doing big pins. And I have a couple of more big pins that I'm making using a different menu other than my main menu. Mm, basically for the same reason, basically because I think they have more experience dealing with that sort of type of pin. 
So, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that I'm hesitant to give out my manufacturer information because some people just don't have a good experience with my manufacturer and I don't want to be blamed for that. <laughs> Another question is like, how do you go about adding glitter? You just literally tell your manufacturer that you want glitter on a specific part or a specific color. Then your manufacturer will usually just match the glitter color with the Pantone color that you chose. Or you could specify the glitter color yourself like I would specify the glitter color and the glitter size if it's, uh, it's, if it's iridescent glitter, basically. But other than that, if I'm just using normal glitter and, you know, I just give it to the menu and be like, you know, whatever. <laughs> just use whatever glitter you think is best for this color and usually they turn out okay. Someone asked me what is screen printing and I showed you this a while ago but I'll show you again. Aerith's face is screen printed. So basically, um, the best way I could describe it is um, stamping on the pin, especially with like smaller details like her face. You couldn't get that with just uh, with just like metal. Someone's asking also, what app do I use for the color naming? Um, I'm assuming it's the Pantones. I use Illustrator. In Illustrator, there's a color book that you can just like open and then it will show you Pantone solid coated colors. And basically, you just like hover over the swatch and you will see the name of the Pantone color. And yeah, that's what you use. Someone's also asking how to take the screen print details. You just like draw it. <laughs> you just draw it as normal. And then you do have to tell your manufacturer, for example, in the face area, again, in my Aerith pin, there, um, along the face area, you need to tell your manufacturer that all these are screen print details. And yeah, usually they'll just like do it themselves. <laughs> They'll uh, take care of the nitty-gritty themselves. They do send you a proof that includes the screen print details. So if there's something you don't like about the screen print that they did in the proof, you can always go back to them and ask them to change it and stuff like that. So someone is saying that Adobe is so expensive, <laughs> which like, yes, yes, it is a bit expensive. And they're asking basically if there's an alternative that I recommend that is cheaper or that could be purchased outright. And there are several programs that other pin makers use. One of them is Affinity Designer. Is it Affinity Designer? Yeah, I think it's called Affinity Designer. <laughs> I actually do have Affinity Photo that's basically like Affinity's Photoshop option, which is pretty good. It is it is almost like Photoshop, but I don't have that much experience with Affinity Designer because Affinity Designer doesn't have the live trace. So I'm actually paying monthly for my Adobe Illustrator, which like, you know, I'm used to Adobe Illustrator, so I don't mind paying monthly for that. But um, you could try Adobe... Oh, not Adobe. You could try Affinity Designer um, if you don't do Live Trace. If you do Live Trace, I think there's this program called Inkscape. And I think it's only available for PC, but correct me if I'm wrong. I'm on a Mac, so I don't have it. Someone's asking like uh, in Procreate if there are uh, Pantone swatches and as of this video, no, there are no Pantone swatches in Procreate. There are people on Etsy who sell um, swatches that are close to like Pantone colors, but they still don't have the actual Pantone name. But I'm guessing if you use their swatches and then just like give that to the manufacturer when they come back to you with the Pantone colors, I'm guessing that the color matching is closer to what you want. But no, there is no 
Pantone book in Procreate. People have also been asking like a canvas size and um, honestly, I don't bother with the canvas size. My canvas size is all over the place. <laughs> it's more important to resize the pin design itself to however big you want your pin design to be. And uh, honestly, I just like crop any excess spaces in the canvas. So yeah, my canvases are just like all over the place. It doesn't matter. Am I using a Wacom? Uh, yes, I used to use a Wacom in my pin design, especially in the tutorial that um, you saw. Again, link in the description and like somewhere here. <laughs> but now I'm using Procreate like exclusively for all my design and then I just transfer that design to Illustrator and then I just do the steps in Illustrator that you have seen in my previous tutorial. And yeah, and that's it for all the questions in my enamel pin tutorial video. I hope that helped. If you liked this video, then please like, subscribe, leave a comment saying that it's helpful. <laughs> and yes, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to follow me on all my other social media. And that's it. Bye. Until the next video. Bye-bye.